session one of your beginning to run program. We're going to do 10 minutes today and you can repeat this session as many times as you want. Stay on this session for as many weeks as you like. You can do it two, th two times a day, three times a day, whatever you want. You do not have to have your makeup done. You do not have to take off your glasses. You do not have to have the most up-to-date training gear. This is nice and easy. Okay, give it a go. Let me know how you get on. And if you decide to do this session and you take a photo of yourself or a selfie of yourself or a photo of your route or a record of your time on your watch to have a starting point, post it to social media, tag me at fionodonnell.ie because I would love to celebrate your efforts. We're going to start our session with a two minute walking warm up. Now you're going to see that halfway up this drive, <laughs> I spot one of my neighbours and stop for a chat. Ideally, you want to be moving for a whole two minutes. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just observe your RPE. And what that means is your rate of perceived exertion or your rate of perceived effort. And essentially what I want you to be able to do is breathe normally. You're just starting to get moving. The important thing here is time on your feet, right? Right. We're getting you out, we're getting you moving for 10 minutes. Ultimately, what we want to understand is how long is your body able to keep you moving for? How long are you on your feet for? And starting off in a walk is not a bad way to start a warm up. So keep yourself moving. You should be a little bit out of breath. You should feel that your heart rate is elevated very marginally for the first two minutes. It's nice and easy and the first two minutes are just about understanding how this is feeling. Are you out of breath? Can you sing a whole verse of Baba Black Sheep without taking a big gulp of a breath? How does that feel? Are you able to feel any niggles in your legs? How are your hips feeling? How is your back feeling? So just spend the first two minutes observing what your body is doing, how your body is feeling, how your breathing feels. You're not taking off at a rate of knots. This is your first two minute warm up. We're going to do a second two minute warm up. And actually, because I stopped for a chat, this first session is going to be a little bit longer than two minutes. We're reaching almost three minutes now. Okay, this time we're going to do the same thing, but for two minutes, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. So as opposed to a gentle, relaxed walk, we're going to go a little bit more active, swinging the arms a little bit more, and we're gradually picking up the pace, picking up the heart rate. If you have this session in your ears, it's probably for the best because this is a very boring video. <laughs> it's just me walking up and down the drive with my dogs. So for this part of the two minutes, I'm swinging my arms a little bit more and I have increased my pace. Now, let's have a chat about how we increase pace. I think when we're younger and we were told to walk faster, we tended to create this longer stride and stride out to the front. And look, this can really contribute to the development of, of sore shins because we're putting our heel out in front of us, essentially putting the brakes on and still trying to walk faster at the same time. So what I want you to do is try not to think about stretching your stride out. I want you to think about keeping your stride length the same, nice, not necessarily short strides, but moderate strides and landing the foot underneath your hips as much as possible. And rather than stretching your stride or taking bigger steps, I want you to increase your cadence. Now, what that means is you're just increasing the amount of steps you're taking in that same period of time. So think about it this way. <laughs> Two dogs are having a great time walking up and down the drive. Totally boring for them, but that's okay too. So you can see there, if you are watching this, I'm not reaching out and bounding up the drive with my legs. I'm just moving my legs a little bit faster. Now, we're not thinking twinkle toes, but oftentimes what we forget is that the speed at which we move our arms is mimicked by how quickly our legs move. So if you're swinging your arms with a bit of energy, your legs are very much going to copy what your arms are doing. And that's going to happen without you even thinking about it. So instead of focusing on moving your little legs as fast as they can go, 
think about swinging your arms with a little bit more energy and your legs are inclined to do the same or move in the same pattern. Now, the next thing I want you to think about is bring your elbows to 90 degrees and moving your arms back and forward. Try not to let those arms cross your body. We're moving forward and we don't want any unnecessary momentum bringing us from side to side. So we're going to practice that body position next when we do a few drills. Okay, that was a little over two minutes for that second round, but my heart rate is elevated a little bit. I feel like I worked just marginally harder, but I'm by no means out of breath. I can speak a full sentence. And the next step now is we're going to add in a bit of a skip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip up the driveway about 20 seconds and then walk back. Skip up 20 seconds, walk back. I'm going to do that four times. Okay, let's start skipping. I'm going to tell you how long you're going to skip for and I'm going to tell you when to stop. Now, why we're skipping is we're working on propulsion or we're working on pressing ourselves away from the ground and with a little bit more force. And that's what we're doing when we're running. So, okay, you can ease off there now. We're going to start walking for recovery. So walking back to our starting point or if you're doing a loop or you're doing this session as part of your daily walk, you just keep walking and I will tell you when we're going to start our skip again. So this is the recovery phase. You might find that your heart rate has increased a little. That's perfectly normal. This is all part of building your fitness as well. Get ready to go skipping again. Nice and gentle. Let's go. So skipping, swinging the arms, opposite arm, opposite leg coming forward. And again, I want you to think about moving those arms forward, not across your body. We're not trying to get as high as we can. It's just a gentle, relaxed skip. And we're going to finish the skip there and start walking for recovery. We have two more of these sessions to do or two more of these repeats to do. And we're just building our endurance in the muscles in the lower leg as well. Now, I want you to think about where you're landing on the foot when you skip. OK, I want you to think about that ball of the foot, not right up on the tips of the toes. Are we ready to skip again in three, two, let's go. So a gentle swinging of the arms. I don't want you to land slap down onto the heel. I want you to feel like you're nice and light on the feet. Skipping gently here. And just again, bring awareness to how your breathing is. Bring awareness to how the calves or the lower legs feel and easing back into a walk there for recovery. We have one 20 second shift to go. So we're just walking now. Let your heart rate come back down to normal. This is kind of a cumulative thing. So you might find you recover really well after the first one, moderately well after the second one. And by the fourth one, you might feel like you're really out of breath when you start off again. That's perfectly normal. One left to do in three, two, and let's skip. Arm swinging. You can put a little bit more energy into this one if you like. Or you can stay skipping as normal, nice and relaxed. Whatever you like, it's up to you. Again, thinking about how you're feeling in the calves. And just go easy on this. If you're not used to skipping, you don't want to injure anything. So ease off back to a walk here now. So just think about the calves and how the calves feel and that Achilles tendon just down at the back of the ankle. How does that feel when you skip? Does it feel tight? Is it pinching? If that's the case, you need to ease off the skipping and just walk. Okay, so the heart rate is a little bit more elevated now. Again, I'm not significantly out of breath because I guess I was recovering well on the way back. So my walking pace was dictated by my need for recovery. So if you need to recover more, if you find yourself very out of breath after that skipping, you can slow down your walk and recover a little bit more. Take your time coming back, whatever works for you. You might take two or three times to feel like you're getting it right for you, but that doesn't matter. This is all about you and what works for you. Now, what we're gonna do next is a little bit of a running drill. We're gonna do it twice. Uh, we're gonna do it up for about 10 seconds, not 20 seconds. We're gonna continue walking for 10 seconds and then we're gonna turn around and we're gonna jog back really slow. It's gonna take about 20 seconds to jog back. That is it. 
once you've done this once you're officially running we're going to start by doing 10 seconds of an a drill so you're walking bringing the knee up to hip height landing the foot down underneath you pulling the toes up towards the sky just for 10 seconds and then we're walking for another 10 seconds. So I just want you to be conscious of the fact that we just worked the hip flexors at the front of the body. We brought the knees up to hip height and we were pulling the toes up as we walked so that we engaged the lower muscles in the abdomen. We've walked for 10 seconds and now we're gonna start jogging. So nice and easy here. I want you to think about your breathing, breathing through your nose out through your mouth, nice and easy. And we're slowly from here coming back to a walk. And at this point now we're gonna go back into our A drill. So once again, you're gonna lift that knee up to hip height. And I want you to lift the opposite arm to the opposite leg. You can see me doing it here in the video Knee is up to hip height, toes are pulled up towards the sky and I'm bending at the elbows. So two more steps on either leg and from here we're going to jog again. So a nice easy jog. I want you to move the arms in the same way you were moving them while you were doing that drill. Bent 90 degrees at the elbows. And we're just jogging for 20 seconds. Nice and slow. You should not be completely out of breath doing this. We're going to turn and walk. So nice and easy with the walking now. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth and give yourself a chance to get the breath back. Okay, our last two minutes of this session are going to include 20 seconds of jogging, 20 seconds of walking, and we're gonna do three repeats at that. That is it, that's our 10 minute session done. We're gonna walk it back home because after that we are finished. Remember, for this part of the session, you want to keep that jog really slow, really easy. You should ideally be able to hum Baba ba, Black Sheep in a full sentence. You shouldn't have to go ba ba, breath, black sheep, breath, have you, breath. That means you're working a little bit too hard. You should be able to, if you're singing it quietly or humming it to yourself, you should be able to go ba ba, black sheep, breath, have you any wool, easy breath. So you should be able to do it like that. Let's go. Okay, let's do this. Let's start with a jog. I want you to bring the elbows to 90 degrees and your arms should be moving from back to front, not across the front of the body from side to side. We're jogging easy for 20 seconds and I'll tell you when you can ease off and start to walk in three, two and one. Nice and easy now from here, just walking and we're going to give ourselves an opportunity to recover. And starting to jog again. So nice and easy. Keep that movement slow. We're not looking to sprint here. We just want this to be an easy jog. We're starting at the very basics. This should not be killing us. It should not be hurting really bad. And we're gonna bring it back to a walk. We've got 20 seconds of walking now. So breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and just give yourself the opportunity to recover. In five more seconds, we're gonna jog again. So let's go in three, two, one, and let's bring the jog on. You're doing a great job. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're halfway through this little interval. So this is what we call interval training, where you're making intervals out of a run and a walk. And we're gonna slow down to a walking pace now. So walking for 20 seconds. So essentially we are 
doing intervals between a walk and a jog here. Sometimes uh, when you're a more experienced runner, you can do a jog and a faster run. Uh, we'll start building our way up to that. And that's it. Simple as two minutes, 20 second intervals, walk, run. That means we do three 20 second jogs. Your first session is done. My session is done. I hope you enjoyed that first 10 minute session of your running career. If you found that really easy and you want to up the ante a little bit, you can increase your effort level by going a little bit faster during those 20 seconds, or you can increase the duration of your runtime and make those 20 seconds stretch out a little bit longer. Let me know how you got on. Tag me at FionaO'Donnell.ie because I want to celebrate your efforts.